Hey everyone, I'm here with Griffin Post. He is going to show us his whole process of how to plan a winter camping trip on Onyx. I love using Onyx because of the high quality imagery and then all the layers that you can incorporate to figure out where good terrain might be, where a safe place to camp might be, and even the recent imagery to see how much snow might be on the approach. It's such a handy tool. So yeah, in general, when I'm e-scouting, especially for a camping trip, I usually start with the terrain and then like work backwards. Okay. And so one of my favorite tools is just the slope angle layer, because that gives you a really good idea of like, where's like the hazards, where are the start zones for avalanches and where are like the safest routes up. Um, so basically anything in this red area, that's that prime avalanche start terrain, like 30, 35 to 40 degrees and like that 38 degrees, 37 degrees is kind of like the most suspect where, as you know, s snow sticks, but can also slide. Mm -hmm. And obviously like this is important for ski terrain, but I'd argue it's almost more important for like the approach because touring up something and like being on that steep avalanche prone slope for a long time is obviously not good. And so starting to create these routes with that in mind. It's funny, I like default to looking due south instead of due north, just because like the north facing terrain is almost always the better snow. Um, right. So I'll have like the compass basically pointed the opposite direction of how most maps are aligned. But this also gives you an idea of like, I'm looking at all the good ski terrain and whatever is on the opposite side is probably the best like uphill terrain. Like this zone that we had marked, you can see like going straight up this or like up this gut, it's like all that purple and red terrain, which is like an heavy start zone. Whereas like going, maybe going up this way, up the backside to the top, and then you're managing it top down and can like this, that zone actually looks pretty fun. Could be like some cool little mini golf lines. Mm -hmm. You can obviously have these layers when you're on your offline map, when you're out in the field. So after we wrap up here, I'll download all these maps and I might just do a quick route up through here. Just save it so it like sticks with me. super original with my naming. <laughs> Route A. And so yeah, that layer gives you a really good idea of what areas to avoid, and especially when you're planning your approach. The other one that I'll use quite a bit as well is the slope aspect, um, just because in new terrain, or if you're not familiar with like visualizing terrain like that, this um, rows basically of different terrain angles oh, helps see. you vil visualize. So yeah, that's so the darker it is, the more north facing it is. Exactly. Like dark blue is due north. And then, so we're looking pretty much anything this time of year in January, like light blue would be due east and then all the way around uh, through purple to red, which would be due west. I like that option of not having to plan out your entire route, but maybe just putting the crux points that might be confusing when you're when you're in the per, in the area in person. Totally, because it's really easy to put a route on Onyx and be like, "Yep, this is the safest." I think that's good to have as a benchmark. But to be when you're out there, to still consider like, "All right, what am I actually seeing?" Versus like, "Oh, this is the route I planned." You can kind of get glued into your phone versus like no, this is what makes the most sense now that I'm seeing it. Um, starting off, it's easy to you know overlook something or like accidentally make a route that goes through a train trap and just having the like presence of mind to be mm -hmm. flexible. Like doing all the planning, but then also being able to let go of the phone and, and just look with your eyes. Totally. Cruising around, this was kind of one of the polygons I had looked at. I'd say this like stuff in the back, like this line, like if that's filled in, like that's a pretty aesthetic like couar that starts right from the peak. And I'll check out the slope angle to see, you know, that's steep prime avalanche terrain. So 
the stars would really have to align for us to get to ski this, but it's worth, I think, putting on the map and like remembering as an objective. So I'll just add a quick waypoint. Oops. So call it objective A plus. Get really original. Um, and then hopefully if this ridge, I mean, this ridge looks pretty steep, but there's similar terrain, similar aspects over here that hopefully you could use as a terrain progression and be like, all right, this is like a much smaller piece of mountain to bite off than this massive Kuar. So maybe we can get on this, ski it and be like, all right, that felt pretty good. Build our confidence. And if the stars align, get to that. Um, but it's also to important to be prepared for like, all right, it's considerable to high avalanche danger, like what are our options now? And that's when you start looking at like down here, more forested areas, short shots, mini golf, and just making sure that, you know, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and being able to like be a bit more flexible should the conditions not line up. Um, and so like this terrain that's like pretty north facing, quite a bit more moderate and just turn down the opacity, just like low angle tree skiing, like that'd be super fun. Like the worst thing is to have like one line, be at the top of it and be like, okay, I have no real beta on like what's going on with the snow. And so if you can w find an area that you can work up to um, a certain line or like that bigger objective, that's ideal. What do these mean? This little these little uh, skull and crossbones, those yeah. are avalanche fatalities over the years. Oh, wow. So um, I think that's, you know, a reminder of the danger that's out there and also like can give you a pretty good idea of some zones to avoid. As far as camp selection goes, um, you know, we're, we're planning to be out there for two nights. If you're going on like a week or two, a two week camping trip, I'd probably consider having access to water um, a little bit more important, but if we're not super close to water on this trip, it's not going to be a big deal to like just melt water and uh, make sure. I usually try to figure out where the sun's going to come up and to, establish uh, camp and somewhere that's going to have sun right away because that's really your only source of heat. Based on the crew's ability snowmobiling, um, okay, I think we'll say. I ask for help so I don't flood the engine. <laughs> my ability is, is a very beginner, <laughs> is what he's referring to. Um, I've picked out a couple zones that should be like pretty approach friendly. Having a realistic idea of mileage is always a good idea. So that's kind of roughly our trailhead. This route builder is super nice because you just click different points and it automatically snaps to the trail. So if like our idea is to camp around there, we know it's a little over seven miles in. And then if you're going off the trail, you just kind of switch to this point draw, and then you can kind of figure out your schwack to how far it might be to like that camp that we have in mind. Oh, nice. So eight miles, uh, most of it's on a groomer, maybe a little bit of a punch in, going up 2,000 feet and be camping around 77, 7,800 feet. You can go into recent satellite imagery um, so right now we're just looking at like the base imagery, but when you click on recent imagery, you can see when it was from. So um, right before up until Christmas, and it gives you an idea of like the snow cover. Obviously, it's not as high res mm -hmm. um, as the base satellite imagery, but it still gives you an idea of like, all right, there's snow out there, like, and then you can couple that with all these snowflake icons are super nice because they're weather stations or snow tell um, stations and you can click on them and you can see exactly how much snow there is, what's the temperature, and you can go into snow water equivalent. There's like a lot of useful information on every little snowflake that's uh, on this map. For the recent satellite imagery is nice for kind of the big picture. And then when you get more granular, you can find recent snow tell sites and see, okay, last 24 hours it snowed three inches depth is around 40 inches. Since the Avalanche Center here is pretty good at forecasting for this area, 
I probably wouldn't go into the snow talent information, but if you are going somewhere really like new or somewhere that there's not a avalanche center, you can go into the snow tell data and you can kind of make a prediction of like what you might see. You can like, all right, there's this long drought for, and the temperatures were really cold and it snowed, you know, three, four feet. So I'm gonna guess that that drought layer is probably gonna be a layer of concern. Right. If I dig down, that's probably like the layer of instability and mm -hmm. that might be you know, more information than you're bargaining for, but it's a good way to just see what you might be going into if there's no avalanche forecast center in the area. Being new to Onyx, this session with Griffin was super helpful, and he showed me all these cool features and tips and tricks that came in handy when we were actually out there in the mountains on our mission. Within 45 minutes of Jackson, there's five different mountain ranges that you could be skiing, and once you expand your horizon and change your expectations and like have that willingness to explore new terrain, like you just have to have faith that like, yeah, it might not be great the first day that you go out or the second or the third, but eventually you're gonna figure it out. Thanks for watching our tutorial on Onyx Backcountry. If you liked it, you can watch Griffin and I go explore the backcountry and go winter camping. The video is live on my YouTube channel. Go give it a watch and I hope you like it.